the only act of creativity is will be to say something about it. But let me begin with, with basically it, which is the last, the, in, in fact, it is the end of the first chapter of the book of Genesis. Now, because of strange reasons, which are not, I, I'm not going to discuss now, it is now the beginning of the of the second chapter of the of Genesis, but uh, we know this this paragraph because that is the the main paragraph said in the Kiddush. It is about Vayeholu, the end of the end, so to say, of creation and the beginning of the of the world in some way in in Hebrew there's a clear distinction between uh, Bore and Yotzer. Uh, it, is, it is not always clear in the translations. The creator was really creator Abni Hilo, from nothing, and the former, that is the Yotzer, the, the one that takes something, existing material, and forms or reforms, reforms it. In fact, when we speak about creative people, can people really be creative in the sense of, in the sense of uh, doing something that never existed? Can they do something that never existed? Or are they formers, yotzrim, in which they take existing material and change it, form it, and it's a, it's a big enough job. Anyway, the story of the, of the, of the creation, which is finished by Vayichudu, is that after six days, the Lord stopped. He made the Shabbat. And since then, what happens? What happened in the six days? In the six days is not so much written about creation as much as about making, so to say, a new order of in the things. It's a new order of, of existence. That is, that is what we call the, the Bria. It's a kind of, there are light, there is light and darkness. And the point is, to find out, I'm not going to, to, to speak about, surely not to be poetic about it, but how, how the, can you, get, how can lightness be conceived from the darkness? How can the, the earth be come, come out of the, of the water? And how can, can, he, can heaven be conceived within the tumult of cutting things to apart? But anyway, all that is, the world is being created in that sense that the rules and laws of the world are created. The end of it, Shabbat, means there is no, nothing more now that is... The, the basic laws are there. The basic creation is there. From that time on, it's not that God is not in the world, but he is not changing the rules. He created the rules. He created, so to say, he created the composition. He created what I call the, the plan. He created many other things, and that is, that is his creation. The world is not changing very much. The mountains are still mountains. They become lower or higher, but still the same laws basically go, go on and continue for, for the time being, which is what we say, what we say nature. And uh, um, let me just put, it's not, it's not my wisdom, I'm just quoting that when, when God doesn't want to sign his name clearly on a, on, a, on a creation of his, he signs it by the name nature. So, so, so there are lots of, of things that created nature and that comes, that is nature and that is from that time on things are more or less the same. In any way, we have, and that is the, the, the main point, which is 
at the end of, the, of this segment is Asher bara elokim la'asot that God created to do. Now that is in many ways a, such an important key sentence, important in so many ways, because what it means is the Lord created the world. He created the laws of the world. He created what I call existence as it is. And then there is man, a strange, impossible, paradoxical, maddening kind of a creature. That is man. It's, it, to say it in one way, man is the impossible uh, combination of of an angel and a gorilla, no, a chimpanzee. So it's strange to have them together in one, in one existence, but they are working together. Not always, not always in peace, but they are, they are coming together. And that is, now man is not only the subject of the story of creation of the, or in Friday, but it's the, the subject of the whole story of the Bible from that point on. And that is, Man is there. And Asher Barai Lokim Lasot, God created to do. Which means, if, if I would put it in a, in a as short and clear as a sentence, it would be God created man because he is like the, like the Lord himself. Man is the, there are two, two in, in the world that has been created, there are rules and laws and regulations, and they, it goes everything according to, according to them. There are two that have free will and can do whatever they want. It is God on above and man below. They have free will. And because of having free will, God created the world. And then, in a way, created man. And he says to man, that is the end of the, of the story of creation, he says, and now you become, you are my junior, junior partner. You can't do, you can't create heaven or earth or, or hell. You can create hell, but not, not in, in a, big, a big, such a big scale as I am doing it. But you, you can, but you are the one that can create. So now it is your duty to create. I did, up to now, I have done my thing. Now it is la sort. The world, world, God created the world in order for you, man, to do. Now, this is an interesting statement in more than one sense. One of the senses is there that it shows at least what the point of view of Judaism is, which is we are basically driven to, and in a way obliged to, to be progressive. Progress is something that we have to do because it is not just, we are never fighting against God when we, we are creative. We are fighting with him. When, when we make, you see, those silly, or not just silly, uh, very intelligent people who said, if God wanted us to, to, to fly, he would have created us with wings. No. He created us without wings, but the, with the ability to outfly any bird. He created us without lots of, without, uh, without all kinds of parts, and we, cre we, can, we can outrun any, any animal. We can, out, uh, we can outdo any fish in the water. And we can do other things. And these things are, it's a drive for, do it better. There's a famous story, which I'm again, hopefully you, 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 you'll get to, to know it. It's a story about a, dis, a disputation between Rabbi Akiva and the, and the Roman or governor of, of Eretz Israel at the time, about what is, what is better the things that God created or the things that man created? And Rabbi Akiva answers easily, 
say, what men do is high, is better than what God does. Now, it is a statement that means we are basically, almost by definition, for progress. God made you to do, last thought. You are supposed to do. And to, in a certain way, you are not fighting when you are creating new things, when you're creating new machines, or in, a, in that sense that it has been de dealt with many, many a year ago in the, the past. We are, we are doing medicine because that is our, oh, that is, that's an obligation on, on us. God possibly gave us melodies. Oh, if he created for us viruses, uh, um, bacteria, and many other, there are quite a number of other, other forms, I mean, internal and external. But he also told us last thought, you fight against them. It is not, you are not fighting against me, says the Lord. You are fighting for me. You are making something that is supposedly what you have to do. So that is what, what the Lord says. Now, he says it in, in a general, the general effort of man to plow the, the earth and to make, to make, to make something grow, to, to, bake, to bake bread and to make something that is better than raw, than, than raw uh, grain. To do everything better, faster, nicer, and, and different. That is, that is our duty. It's not, it's not something that we are fighting against the will. We are fighting for it in, in order to do it better, do more, and do more and more and more of it. So this, this kind of, it's an inbuilt, not just a acceptance, but a drive for progress, which is clearly found among the Jews in, in so many ways, the drive for progress. And now, speaking about and other, other things, about, it's called creativity. Now, the creativity is the four, is one of the very few things that God says he doesn't dictate the orders. He doesn't make the, the, all the details, but he says to, to man, you are given the ability to be like me, to, to be free, and to be creative. In the Greek mythology, Prometheus steals fire from God, from the gods. In our tradition, Adam makes fire by listening to God. So it's a very different, the, we are not fighting against the powers that are going to, to, to hold us, but we are in a way in a way, we would say, the, the God says, okay, I am now, st I stop to do, to do the planning and creation. Now, little guys, I know that you are little. I know that you are not, that, that, that you know, not, you are not omnipotent. I know that you, are, you sometimes are very silly. And I know that you are, uh, you have all kinds of, of wickedness in your, in your makeup. But still, I trust you to be my little partners in making this world better. So that is what we are supposed to do. We're supposed to do. We are not, we are fighting with the encouragement, with the encouragement of God. Like, if you want it, a good father is never envious of the children. So God, in a way, looks at the world and says, look at these creatures. They have jet planes. They, are, they, they now have, they have all kinds of instruments to go to reach the moon or Mars or anything else. Well done, little guys. Because, because it is a mandate of God, I don't know, it is not written there, but basically God says, but okay, you are given the power, you are given the ability, you have the internal desire that even the smallest children, without training, they try to be creative, to do things. They, whether they are playing with the, with, the fi with, the fi with the fingers or they are doing other things, very nice. And please, don't do it too stupidly. So I mean, that is something that we can ask all kinds of, of creative people. I mean, you have the right, you have the ability. 
I try to do it. That in, in fact, the Father in heaven will at least be, be happy with your handiwork and not the other way around. <laughs>